In this video, we're going to talk about refining your masks using morphological operations. Morphological operations are image processing functions that change the image depending on shape. There are two basic morphological operations, and these are dilation and erosion. And there are two compound operations that you should know, which are opening and closing. We will look at dilation and erosion in this video and opening and closing in the next. Let's have a look at how morphological operations work. Morphological operations use a structuring element, which is a small logical array that contains a shape used to probe the image. I'm going to be using images that look like this on the left with a blue square border to represent the structuring element. The center of the structuring element is called the origin and indicates the pixel that is being probed. I'm going to indicate the origin with a magenta outline. And finally, the shape of the structuring element is determined by the true pixels. In this first example here, the structuring element consists of a tree by tree array of true pixels, so this shape would be a square. But we could also have a cross shape such as this. Let's look at an example. On the left is the input mask, which is an L shape, and on the right is the output mask, which is currently blank. The way morphological operations work is you take the structuring element and overlay the origin over each pixel of the input mask. The true pixels of the structuring element is then compared with the pixels of the input mask underneath it. And the corresponding pixel on the output mask, which is indicated in magenta here, will be changed depending on this comparison. Now the comparison that you make will depend on the type of operation it is. So let's first start with the morphological erosion. In morphological erosion, if every true pixel in the structuring element is over a true pixel in the image, then the output pixel will be true. And we will be ignoring any pixels in the structuring element that does not fit in the image. Let's take a look at some examples. Again, on the left here is our input mask, and on the right is the output mask, which is currently blank. I'm going to pick a few representative locations to carry out the erosion operation and show you how the comparison works. Let's start with this pixel here. On the left, I have overlaid the square structuring element, which consists of a three by three matrix of trues with the origin centered at this pixel. The magenta square in the output mask indicates the same location and it is the pixel that we're gonna change. Now, as I was saying earlier, in an erosion operation, if every true pixel in the structuring element is over a true pixel in the image, then the output is true. Our structuring element here is a square, and every pixel in that square is sitting over a true pixel in the input mask, so therefore the output pixel is true. All right, let's move the structuring element to a corner of the input mask. Here you can see that the true pixels of the structuring element is not sitting over any true pixels of the input mask, and so this output pixel will be false. Let's take a look at another example and let's say this time we move the structuring element to probe the corner of this L shape here. In this case, you can see that only some of the pixels that are true in the structuring element is sitting over a true pixel of the input mask. And so in this case, for morphological erosion, the output pixel will remain false. All right, let's take a look at the H case. So if this structuring element was sitting in the very first pixel of the image, some portion of the structuring element will not fit over that image. In MATLAB, you will ignore any pixels that does not overlap with input mask. So this output will be false. If we had a different input mask where the pixels on the top left corner here were true, then if we were to perform morphological dilation, this output pixel will be true. So I've shown you how morphological erosion works in just a few pixels in this input mask. But if you wanted to get the actual output of the whole operation, you would have to carry out the erosion operation over every pixel of the input mask. And this movie shows you how this process works. And you can see that we end up with an output mask that looks smaller, but has the same shape as the input mask. And this illustrates the effect of morphological erosion. So an erosion means that we are removing pixels and reducing the size of our input mask. Now, thankfully, you don't have to program this algorithm yourself. 
MATLAB has the function imerode that takes in two arguments. The first is a logical array, which is your mask. And the second is a structuring element. And the structuring element will be defined using the function strel. And this function takes in two input arguments. Um, the first input argument specifies the shape of the structuring element that you want to use. In this case, it's a square. And the following arguments will specify the dimensions of the shape. In this case, it will be the size of the square. Now, as we will see, you don't necessarily need to use the strel function here to get the structuring element. You can also define your own structuring elements by inputting a logical matrix. Let's switch over to MATLAB and see how this works. So in the matrix M, I have defined input mask that we were using as an example, and it looks like this. Now I'm going to create a structuring element using the function strel. And to match the shape for the structuring element that we had in our example, I'm going to define a square. The second input argument for a square shaped structuring element is the width or the size of the square. And in this case, it is a three because we want a three by three matrix. Notice that this output variable SP is actually a strel object. It has a class of strel and it has two properties, the neighborhood and the dimensionality. Now the dimensionality simply specifies that it is a two dimensional structuring element. And the neighborhood is actually the logical array that defines the structuring element. To show you what I mean, we can use the dot notation to extract the neighborhood property. And you can see that it is just a three by three logical array of trees. Okay, so now let's use im erode to erode this image. Now I'm going to display this output and you can see that this is the image that we had earlier in the example. Now, as I was saying earlier, you do not have to use the function strel to define the structuring element. You can also define the structuring element simply by defining a logical matrix and then use this as an input for IM erode. Let's see how this works. So I'm going to clear all input variables except for the logical array M, which was our input mask. And I'm going to define a new structuring element simply by declaring an array of trues. And I'm going to use the same function im, im erode. To erode this mask. You can see that we get the same result. All right, let's take a look at the second operation, which is morphological dilation. This operation works exactly the same way as morphological erosion, but this time we're performing a slightly different comparison. In morphological dilation, if any true pixel in the structuring element is over a true pixel in the input image, then the output will be true. Let's take a look at just a few examples. So let's say we have this input mask and we now want to apply dilation on the top left pixel. Now in morphological dilation, if any true pixel of the structuring element is of a true pixel in the image, then the output is true. And so in this case, the output pixel will be true. And this process repeats over and over across the entire image. And we end up with an output mask that is similar to the input mask, but larger. And again, this is the output of the dilation operation. It dilates things so it makes it larger. In MATLAB, you can use the function imdilate to perform the dilation. And this function has the same inputs as imerode did. Let's switch over to MATLAB and have a look at a very quick example. Again, this is the same input mask as we had earlier. And just like before, I'm going to define a three by three square structuring element. And this time I'm going to run the dilation operation. And you can see that the output mask is a little bit larger. 
Now you might be wondering how the shape of the structuring element affects the final output. Well, the easiest way to test this is to simply use a different shape. I'm going to use the dilation operation here to illustrate this. I'm going to change the input mask from a square to a cross shape. I'm going to define this cross shape by hand. So it is false, true, false, true, 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 and false, true, false. And if I display this, you can see that it is that cross shape that I showed you earlier. And so now let us run the dilation operation with this new structuring element. And you can see that this time, the edges of the resulting mask is a little bit curved, kind of has this kind of cross shape to it. And so the shape of the structuring element affects the shape of the output mask. And the easiest way to understand how all that works is to play around with a few different shapes and see how this works.